In the previous screencast, we discussed why OAuth is important as a means of sharing data between services on the web. In this screencast, we will explain the first step of setting up OAuth access between two services, and that's those two services uh, establishing trust through means of a shared secret offline. Uh, in this diagram, you'll see that secret takes the form of uh, a two-part client ID and a client secret. So uh, back to our example of Parsley.com, a personal financial dashboard. Parsley wants to allow its users to add their accounts at Acme Bank to their portfolios. Assuming that the requisite commercial agreements are in place, it's now time for the system administrators to work together to establish the shared secret. So to start, the Parsley admin will write a note to the Acme Bank admin requesting that Acme set up a new OAuth client for Parsley.com. Note that the request includes a callback URL. In future screencasts, we'll go into detail as to the responsibilities of this callback URL back at Parsley. Uh, in this episode, it's enough to consider that URL as part of the client's identity. Once the admin at Acme Bank receives this email, he logs into Acme's OAuth client management system and creates a new OAuth client ID and secret for Parsley.com. He will send this information back to Parsley of course, as these are secrets, pay special care that they are communicated via a trusted mechanism. Uh, email might not be the best tool. Um, so the Acme admin now replies and Parsley has the secret. And the final step is for the Parsley admin to configure the Parsley site to use this OAuth client ID and secret when the user wants to add an Acme bank gadget to her finance dashboard. So now that this client ID and client secret are shared, it's possible for users to establish their own individual OAuth access tokens and add bank gadgets to their Parsley dashboard. The next screencast will cover this aspect of OAuth.